Traders, how are you? With Marcello. Today we're doing the recap of what happened in the markets last week from the Finca in Colombia. Overall for the week, the biggest news items are that the United States Fed in the meeting that they had in Jackson Hole, they talked about how they're going to continue aggressively raising interest rates, even if it means higher unemployment rates and a recession. So essentially that sets off a, a cascading events where everything's literally just going to go haywire. <laughs> That's the easiest way to put it. So remember when they raised rates that literally stopped economic movement, economic activity. You, you, you know, the mortgages, for example, for a house, you know, six months ago would have cost you maybe two thousand, twenty five hundred a month, three thousand. You know, if it's, you know, maybe eight hundred thousand or a million dollar home, it'd be like four thousand dollars. And now because of the interest rate rises, the cost to service that debt. In other words, if you were going to buy the same house, your payment would be $2,000 higher a month or $1,500 higher because the interest rates go up. Interest rates on credit cards go up, you know, absolutely everything. So that kind of puts a the brakes on the economic activity. And that's part of the reason why we had an absolute collapse in the markets this week. Overall for the US, mostly negative, Canada as well. Europe markets are mostly lower as well. The DAX in Germany was the biggest loser there. Did have two or three winners, but for the most part, they were negative. Latin America was mostly mixed as well. Middle Middle East and Africa mixed, point, you know, 0 0.6, 0 0.3, 0 0.4. They didn't move that much. And in the far, far east, we have the Hang Seng in Hong Kong being the biggest positive of them all, but it was pretty mixed as well there in Asia. And, and Australia is not considered Asia, but you guys know what I mean when I say Far East. Bitcoin and cryptocurrency news, USDT and other stable coins are at a risk of being prohibited from Europe. Like they, they love regulations there in Europe and they're thinking about passing what's called the, the, the law called MICA, M-I-C-A, where it might actually become illegal to have these stable coins like, like Tether, for example, USDT. Outside of the fact that there's some rumors out there that just like Terra collapsed and went to zero, that the same might happen with USDT due to the fact that, you know, they're not allowing people to verify their, their books. Bitcoin also lower for the week. It went down over 5%, about 21,307 almost. If you guys remember that pattern that I showed you on the charts, it's just now starting to come down pretty hard. As I mentioned to you guys before, I still thought that we still had a little bit of downward pressure. Looks like we're getting it right now, but we'll see if we can break through this support area now that we're starting to touch, even though we're coming down pretty hard. In commodities, German farmers are saying that there's going to be a 50% crop loss due to drought. Remember last week, I showed you guys how the rivers, the Rhine River, for example, which is one of the biggest arteries in Germany that they use for transport. It's part of the, uh, the borders between France and Germany. The, the water levels have gotten so low that there was writing on the rocks from the last time there was this kind of drought in the 1600s that literally read, if you read this, weep, if you read this, cry, because... You know, the, the the drought that they used to have before was pretty serious. So obviously we're, we're walking into that again. India, which is world's largest rice shipper, is likely to restrict the exports of rice now that their domestic supply is under threat. So now remember the situation that we had with the grains and, and the, the wheat coming out of the breadbasket of Europe, which is Ukraine, when the war started. Now it looks like we're starting to have other problems as well when it comes to the rice. Tesla hit a three for one stock split. A lot of people hit me up on Instagram saying, oh my God, what happened to Tesla? I went down by 60%. But in reality, for every one stock you had, you get three, or excuse me, you get two, in other words, three total, and they drop the price of the stock to make it more accessible. One of the unusual things, however, that I thought was really interesting was that the charging stations in China, due to the drought that they're having and the excessive heat for the most part, they shut off. They, they in the city of Chengdu, they literally just shut off the power so people weren't able to charge their electric cars. All part of the plan. I got the they installed the button here now, so now I can just hit it whenever I want. <laughs> in China, the Yangtze River, which is another important river for them, revealing Buddhist statues. So I just mentioned to you guys about the rocks where it said, you know, the river levels was so low in the Rhine River in Germany where it read, if you see this wheat because of the previous drought that they had now in china they're starting to appear 
Buddha statues under the levels of the river because that river is going so low as well. The, the natural gas prices in Europe are now over 10 times the average at this time of the year. The problem isn't going to be now. The problem is going to be when, when winter hits. Because remember that there's still a big portion of Europe that uses the natural gas, especially from Russia, to be able to warm their, their homes. So that's it's going to be a big problem. Zinc and aluminum as well. The smelters or the factories, essentially, that make these metals they are starting to shut down as well because they use so much electricity. So since the price of electricity has skyrocketed in Europe, they're literally just shutting down the plant because just they can't afford to pay for the electricity. So you see how this is, this is why I like to do these videos so you guys can see and connect the dots. You know, we're literally walking into the disaster. And again, I, always, I think I'm going to mention this every week. Remember that whenever there's a crisis, there's always an opportunity to make money. For example, during the Great Depression in 1929, there were more millionaires created than at any other time in the history of the world. So keep that in mind, right? So even though we got some pretty serious things coming, there's some pretty serious opportunities as well. Iceland, which is a country... For those of you guys that don't know, it's a country in the Atlantic between Europe and the United States. The supermarkets there are now offering credits to their customers since they're not able to afford food. Uh, basically, shop now, pay later. And I kind of see this as a, as a bridge to what's called UBI, which is universal basic income, where you have to rely on the government. And remember, they're doing it on purpose. -da 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 -da. I love it. I, it's so funny that. Eventually, I have a bunch of other different stickers. But for now, you're going to have to stick with me because. So one thing that's going to happen is what happens, for example, when the people stop paying the credits for the grocery stores, then the governments are going to have to bail out the grocery stores. Then we're going to have to rely on the government for food. You see how it's all planned. The preppers are right. Europe's drought is maybe the worst in 500 years. Now that 64% of the EU is under a drought warning and even U.S. natural gas prices spiked 81% in seven weeks, they've hit a 14-year high. Now, even though we had a situation where the dollar exploded in value due to the demand because of the interest rates or what the Fed, the central bank in the United States, said that they were going to do to continue increasing interest rates, U.S. crude and Brent actually went up, not down due to the fact that Saudi Arabia talked about cutting output in OPEC, the oil mafia. Aluminum prices could be headed higher as well. After a 30% pullback this year, aluminum is along with other metals, one of the metals used in the renewable energy products. That's, for example, one of the reasons why I love silver because solar panels, you know, all of these new technologies use silver and they haven't found a major silver mine in quite some time. Precious metals are lower for the week. Again, the situation with the dollar and the interest rates, gold went down by 0.48% to 1,740, while silver went down 0.73% to 1,902. And then in financial and banking news, the Bank of Korea is another bank, another country that's raising their interest rates. They just raised them 25 basis points to 2.5%. So the whole world is literally increasing their interest rates. So literally the economic activity is just stepping on the brakes because everybody, you know, they're trying to get the inflation under control, which in a way, I think they're doing it on purpose. I won't hit the button. I think I kind of hit it too many times, but I, I think it's definitely all part of the plan. They need to make the crisis so bad that you're going to accept their new world order, you know, chip, pig with a chip on your finger, mark of the beast, the whole nine. China launches 200 billion yuan bailout in the reeling housing sector. Remember that in China, 70 Seven zero percent of the household wealth is in real estate. And remember that China is still the second largest economy in the world. So if 70% of the wealth of people in China is going down the tubes, things are not going to be fun in China very soon. And if the second largest economy in the world is not doing very well, that's going to affect everybody else. And remember that with these problems with the environment, as I mentioned to you guys in 2020, how I thought the next 10 years we were going to have the economic problems, the social problems, the environmental problems. Europe on its own, obviously it's not a country, right? But the whole EU system, since they're on one currency, that's the third largest economy in the world. So notice the first, the second, and third largest economy, which if I had to just throw a number out there, it's probably 60 to 70% of the economic output in the world. They're literally having all kinds of economic problems and environmental problems. So remember the preppers were right. 
Political news on Wednesday, Thailand's constitutional court ordered the prime minister to be suspended from his duties, saying that he overstayed his legal term in office. The 2022 U.S. midterm elections are now 74 days away, with the Republicans still having a five-point lead their bid to control Congress. And in, and in Canada, there's a new leading cause of death with which the Canadian government is saying is an unknown cause of death. So the leading cause of death now in Canada is an unknown cause of death. I wonder what's happened. I'm going to hit the button now. I wonder what's happened the last two years that are different than before. Where they insisted on putting something in your body that you may not have wanted to put in your body. And then uh, I, I put this in here because I thought it was pretty funny. And, and well, it's not funny, but it's just kind of the, the what shows the kind of environment or, or world that we're living in today. San Francisco cops catch the catalytic converter thief red-handed. This guy has stolen a ton of these. The catalytic converter, if you don't know, is that, that silver box that sits under your car that helps to control the pollution that comes out of your car. Well, there's a lot of valuable metals in that catalytic converter, more than anything, platinum, which is worth thousands of dollars per ounce. And then they just let them go. And this is what's happening all over the country where you just commit a crime, they catch you. And, you know, in California, you can just go and steal up to a thousand dollars worth of goods and just walk out of the store. They won't even arrest you for it. So get out of cities. The preppers are right. In economic news, According to the National Energy Assistance Directors Association, over 20 million households, one in six American homes are behind on their utility bills. So now because the prices of everything are absolutely exploding, Americans can't even afford to pay their, their, their electric bill. There's about $16 billion of unpaid bills, double the pre-pandemic total. And the average balance has climbed to 97% over what it was before since 2019 to about an average of $792. Labor Department is stating that the initial filings for unemployment benefits dropped last week. So there's a little bit of good news, but it's probably not going to last very long. And the U.S. De Department of Commerce said that the U.S. consumer spending barely rose in July. Now, this is important because remember that 70 Seven zero, almost 70% of the economy in the U.S. is consumer spending. So if consumer spending isn't going up and it's actually going down, that's literally 70% of the U.S. economy. And remember, I just mentioned to you, right? The U.S. is the biggest. They're having problems. China is the second biggest. They're having problems. And the EU, which is the third biggest, they're also having a lot of problems. Corporate news. I wanted to talk about this because it just shows the the kind of the corruption that we live in today. Qantas, which is the the kind of the national airline, one of the bigger airlines that are renowned from Australia, their shares went up by 10% on Wednesday after they reported a almost $1.3 billion loss. But because the board planned to buy back their shares, so they lost $1.3 billion, but they approved $400 billion to buy their own shares. And why did they, why did they do that? Because obviously the executives and the board of directors has shares in the company, and they want the shares to go up so they can make money. See how that works? U.S.-based discount retailer Dollar Tree plunged 10% after they reported that it's going to cut its full-year forecast. Again, people aren't going to spend money anymore, so that obviously is going to affect quite a bit the economy. And Tesla, I mentioned to you guys about their three-for-one stock split. World's largest cinema chain, I reported to you guys last week, is preparing for bankruptcy Cineworld, which also owns Regal Cinemas. It's going to go into bankruptcy. And in technology, I thought this was pretty cool. The U.S. NASA's Artemis One mission is going to take off next Monday, where it's going to do a 32-day voyage on the far side of the moon and back. Super interesting for those that don't think that the world is flat. And flight should yield spectacular images and valuable scientific data. The rocket system is about 15% more than Apollo program's rocket system, which is, I thought that was pretty cool. But, you know, the world might be flat, so... They're just going to fly it in space in a circle, apparently, right? Wednesday, German officials launched what they say was the first fleet of hydrogen-powered passenger trains. So they're going to basically make an agreement with Canada to be able to get the hydrogen so they can change the motors on these trains from diesel to hydrogen because Germany is super super into the clean energy and apple also announced that they're holding a launch event on september 7th where they're going to unveil the 
iPhone 14, which is going to be another expensive phone that you really don't need. That's probably just a little bit better than the last one. And investment news, China's property sales have plunged likely 30% this year, according to numerous analysts. So remember, again, 70% of the wealth in, in China. And the auction house Christie's announcements, Christie's, that's the name of it, announced that they're going to be selling $1 billion worth of art for charity from the late co-founder of Microsoft, Paul Allen. Latest, latest signal that the art market has been not slowing down at all. And the UK energy bills are set to rise 80% in October as Britain's energy regulator announced on Friday. Remember that there's still a movement in the UK to st everybody to stop paying their bills on October 1st because the prices of everything are exploded and supposedly the government isn't doing anything about it. In international events, the temperatures in China reached 113 degrees Fahrenheit. That's 45 degrees Celsius. And due to that, obviously, everybody was trying to kick in their air conditioning and that caused quite a problem uh, remember again that in Chengdu people couldn't charge their neos or their teslas because they just there was no power they just shut it off they also been hit by flash floods and droughts as well and on friday the belarusian president alexander lukashenko which is the country of belarus formerly part of russia said that its military warplanes are modified to be able to carry nuclear weapons so ah, another possible war isn't that amazing that's the news for this week, guys. Let me know if you guys have any questions. Don't forget to subscribe. See you next week.